Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. Thank you so much for joining me today. You probably can see a new face on my screen. And for some of you, it's probably not a new face. But if it is a new face, get ready to be blown away. Seriously. Okay. This is Dr. Vicki. And I'm just going to really quickly say Dr. Vicki is a chiropractor. But guess what? She even does more than that. And this is where it's really going to blow you away. And that is, is that she uses the Kabbalah. We're going to learn about that. And she uses numerology and astrology. And she rolls all that together like some kind of very special dough that she makes some really cool things that actually help you. I've had a reading with her, blew my mind. I've already sent my clients to her. And now I'm so thrilled to have her on my channel. And she's going to help us today with politics because you guys, we need help. We really need help. And I really love the way she's taken these different modalities and blended them together to come up with kind of, if you three, any three times, anything is better. If you ask me three donuts, that's better than one donut, you know? So if you're using three different modalities, it's three times better. So with that, hi, Dr. Vicki, thank you so much for joining me. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello, Susan. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. So I, uh, I've been a chiropractor since 1987. I'm aging myself. So, um, and, uh, I, you know, I was in private practice for years and, um, then, um, I was taking care of my mother who was uh, aging. She came to live with us. So I would work out of my home in my office and see patients. And then COVID happened and I, uh, couldn't like really didn't want to bring new people in because oh, yeah. my mother was a hundred and I, you know, so, and then it was, then everything shut down and uh, astrology has been something that I've studied ever since I got out of chiropractic school. Like I, I finished all the, the, all the physiology. And then I said, what do I, now what's the next thing I want to explore? And so I actually had my first astrology reading and was blown away. Just like you say, you get blown away. And I said, wow, this lady knows me better than I know myself. I got to learn this. So that's what I did. I started to study astrology, pretty much self-taught while I was, you know, practicing and running a practice and the like. And then once COVID hit, hit uh, and I had been doing some astrology for people, you know, charging. I was a professional astrologer, but not bit, that wasn't a big practice. It was mostly the chiropractic, but after um, 2020, I sort of shut my practice down. I was close to retiring anyway. I was tired of the insurance game. Um, and so I sort of dove into uh, the astrology and the Kabbalah. I've been studying the Kabbalah since 1999. So right when we had that eclipse of the century in 1999, I decided this is the time I walk into the Kabbalah. And uh, I did an apprenticeship with my teacher, Linda Ward. She's uh she's down in Florida, I think still. Um, and uh, I've been doing that ever since. And it's just such a fantastic tool for um, understanding who you are. And, and really, that's why I got into astrology was because I wanted to know who I was because people were telling me who I was, but it wasn't resonating. And I couldn't figure out why. So I said, well, let me let me look at this astrology stuff. And then when you then when I rolled in Kabbalah, I'm like, wow, this is even more intense. So I so now you know, do what you love and love what you do. I love to do it, and uh, and I like to share it. And most people really enjoy it. I think. Oh my God, most people really enjoy it. Look, let me just tell you guys, I've had a lot of readings in my life, right? A lot of astrology readings and different types of readings. And when she did the Kabbalah, I was like. If I hadn't already been sitting down, I would have fallen out of my chair. Like there's like I have things that hold me in. Like <laughs> I would have just fallen out of my chair because it for the first time in 58 years, somebody told me something that clicked a whole new thing into my awareness and my understanding. You know, like it's almost like I was getting all these puzzle pieces and it was like, OK, great. This is starting to make sense in my life. And that's what I think readings are. But she gave me a really important puzzle piece. So talk about the Kabbalah. I don't think I don't think people really know what it is, or if they do, I'm not sure they know what it is the way you described it to me. Well, the Kabbalah is really a 
it's sort of a blueprint and you can take almost anything and apply it to the blueprint. It's made up of uh, 10 circles or sephiroth with paths that connect it. And um, you can put astrology on it. You can put numerology on it. You can put the tarot on it. Um, mm. You can work with your chakras. You can see which chakras are active, which chakras are shut down. And, uh, and of course, when we did yours, your third eye was right. So I had never seen a chart until like that, until I saw yours. Because you're very interesting. I can't wait to talk to you. I'm like, I've, I've heard them before. Um, but so what's interesting, and I forgot to say, you also do the tarot. So what was really interesting is when she presented this information to me, because I think this is really important, right? Like, you have to be able to consume the information in a way that's helpful. If somebody just throws a lot of stuff at you and it doesn't make sense, it's not helpful. And what she was able to do was, and I'm getting chills actually, what she was able to do was use the tarot, use the Kabbalah, use astrology and use numerology and, and somehow weave a story for me and explain it in very simple, clear terms. I'm telling you, it was it was really, really an important reading for me. I just found it so helpful. So, and you're saying, so what I kind of thought was the was the Kabbalah was connected to Judaism. Is that correct? Or well, where does it come from? Well, they they're not, well, yes, it's connected. It's a Jewish mystical tradition, but there's also an Egyptian Kabbalah. Some people think that it came from Egypt. But there's also a petroglyph of the tree of life down, I think, in Australia that God knows how well that is. So really, it's an extraterrestrial is what it is. And it's sort of like a, a blueprint. And the interesting thing, the word Kabbalah means to receive. So the more you work with it, the more you you actually create a relationship with it. Wow. And so as you work the Kabbalah, you are able to get deeper and deeper into the truths of it. And it's, and it's based, the Kabbalah that I do, is based on the Western occult tradition, the 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 uh, the Golden Dawn, uh, the occult, the Western occultists. They took the Kabbalah um, and they worked with it. I don't do magic because you can do magic with the Tree of Life, but there's a understanding of it and then connecting it to um, the numerology uh, is is more of that Western occult tradition. And then you add the astrology, and I've been like I said, been studying astrology. 35 years maybe. And um, then I just applied my evolutionary astrology to it. And it just, it's so, it's like a beautiful symphony. It just comes together. You have to know the parts. You have to have studied the parts, but it's still, and then it takes on a life of its own. As I said to you, like I have all the charts in front of me. I know what I'm, I'm I look at the chart. I look at the chart. And then in the middle of the reading, sometimes something just comes through me and I'm like, all right, well, I don't know why I'm saying that, but I'm going to say that. And I'll usually say, I'm not sure why I'm saying this, but I'm going to say it. And then, you know, it's not necessarily for me. It's so. psychic. It's intuition. It's psychic. So on yeah. top of that, then you're, you're, you know, it's like a control panel. You've got all the charts in front of you and, or a symphony, a, a, all the instruments in front of you. And you simply know how they all fit together. And then in, in the middle of that, something, you know, and divine information comes in as well, that it deepens the, the whole reading, which I find so very helpful. So now how does all that work with the United States or with astrology? Cause you mentioned that today is a full moon. We're taping this on Sunday. Uh, it'll probably be published Monday, but we're taping this on the full moon. So, um, how would you use this or what have you gleaned or learned about what the United States is going through? Uh, using these methods? Well, I mean, just purely astrological, uh, purely astrological look at um, the United States chart, if we take the inception chart to be the Declaration of Independence, which is really just a declaration of independence. It's not really the start of a nation. The start of a nation is actually the Constitution chart, which happens a number of years uh, beyond that. I can't remember the exact date 18 something <laughs> sorry <laughs> history is not my thing right it's okay so, uh, but uh if we go by that chart 
Um, last year, we had something called a Pluto return in our chart. The United States has Pluto and Capricorn. Pluto is about power. Capricorn in Capricorn, it could be industrial power. It can be power of the resources that we have in the ground. Um, in, and, and unfortunately, it, it was also slavery, the, 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 the whole like idea of this. Uh, we were prosperous because we had free labor, right? So, so there's that. So what you'll notice is as we have this Pluto return, which happens 248 years from when the when the the country was was instituted, because that's how long it takes Pluto to come back around. Uh, all these issues come up again, right? Reparations, slavery, um, um, white supremacy, and we see all of this stuff come back up. And what Pluto does is it dredges up all the stuff that's that's just under the surface for us to see it and to heal it because ultimately that's what Pluto is there to do. So we've been going, when Biden says, you know, we're, we're, uh, what does he say? We're going for the soul of America or there's an expression he uses about the soul of America. He's right. He's right. He understands that Biden is a very powerful. Now I know people are going to say, Oh yeah, he's an old guy. And a, Please. This guy is, he's kind of a, somewhat of a savant. Now, I know people are also going to, because I'm honest, like, I'll tell you, my political leanings are progressive. I'm a Bernie girl. I love Elizabeth Warren. You know, that that's my, that's my, that's my gig. And Biden was like a nice guy, you know? So I was like, the first time he ran for president, I considered voting for him. Uh, something happened and he had to drop out. Uh, he's He's got quite a chart. He's got a lot of Scorpio in his chart. I think you were talking about that with um, another astrology you had yeah. on, right? Um, yeah, he's got uh, all kinds of planets and they're all in Scorpio in the 12th house. He could be a medium. He could be a side. Yeah. Well, I think he, I think he gets a lot of his information from the other side. Oh, I didn't that's how that. that's, yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, he he's doesn't got say a that. psychic president, you guys. Well, Obama was a psychic president too. And so is actually, so is, they're all psychic. I mean, Trump was psychic. I don't know about uh, what's the guy, uh, this guy. What, what was his um, Nixon? Nixon? I doubt Nixon was psychic. He, he, he but it, you know, beyond beyond that, I think they're all. I think you kind of have to be. You have to be a little wow. bit. You wow. have to. You know, it's like a self selects. It almost like self selects for people that have a certain not only skill set that's practical and three D, but skill set that is intuitive. Intuitive and vibrational. I mean, and really, vibration. we do, we do it's Scorpio as a, you know, to get off topic, of course, because now here I'm off topic. But Scorpio is uh, is an is an energy of relating and relating on a very intimate level. And we need to relate to the rest of the world. Right. And the rest of the world needs to relate to us. So in that case, that that's the little Biden story. But as far as America, so we had our we had our. Um, Pluto return and it takes a long time. Pluto takes a you know it, it takes a long time to get there. It's there for a while. It takes a long time to move off. And so we're still we still don't really know what that means because it's so recent. It's probably gonna take another probably till 2026 before we really get an idea of what what all that was about. So that was last year. This year we're having something called a Chiron return. Oh and and Chiron is the archetype of the wounded healer. And so we have Chiron and Aries uh, in the United States. We're having our fifth Chiron return because Chiron returns happen every 52 years, about. So we're on our fifth one. So we're on our first Pluto and our fifth uh, Chi Chiron return. The interesting thing about the five is that in the Kabbalah, in the way that I use the numbers, the United States has a path of life that's a five it's a it's a what i call 32 five the six of wands if you want to look at it in the tarot and it's located on the tree of life in the heart in tipper at the heart chakra which is right in the center of the the tree and that's a place of mediation it's the place where the upper and the lower blend it's the place of humanity right so this is all connected to the kabbalah so we have as the united states that's our path and five is about freedom. So it's the path of freedom. 
okay? But we also have a shadow, just like the a person can have a shadow vibration, the United States can have a shadow vibration. And the United States shadow is the five, is the 32 five, it's the same vibration. So what we've come in, and the, the United States is here to heal the wound around freedom. What does freedom mean? Freedom for who? Freedom wow. for who? Yeah, right? So now we're in our fifth Chiron return, and there's another five, and five is about change. So we know that things are changing. We can feel things are changing. The wound around Aries is the wound for the right to be alive, to be here now. And then you can extrapolate from that as the wound of exceptionalism, the wound of gun violence, the wound of war, the wound of the warriors that come back from war, the wound of being yourself. How you define yourself is your business. It's nobody else's business, right? So there's a, so all of that, like a pimple that popped or a boil that burst, is all out there, and it stinks. And it stinks. But if you don't know it's there and you can't see it, how can you heal it? Right? So we're looking, we're saying everything's going nuts and crazy. What's going on here? Well, it's because it's time to know it's there. Once you know it, you can't unknow it. That's and true. then once you know it, you're responsible for it. So now it's it's about doing what we need to do. And so, and we're all going through, you know, just because the United States has Chiron and Aries. Chiron's in Aries right now. The last time Chiron was in Aries was in the 70s. You know, the Vietnam War, the 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 warriors coming back, right? That all that woundedness that happens. Um, and even like when we look at some of the the Trump supporters being like ex-military and this, that, and the other thing, they're tired of going into other countries, killing people. Oh, I'm not I'm supposed to say unalive, right? <clears throat> Sorry, okay. I'm it's all right. Trouble. It's all right. Is it right? Okay. Uh, I'm always afraid I say the wrong thing. Um, you know, and and then they, it's like, what are we doing? You know, what 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 are we doing? So what it's triggering these themes that the 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 he, the wounded healer, but it's also the '70s is the rise of the feminine. Yes, the rise of women saying, uh, "We're out of the kitchen. We're now in the boardroom." over in the universities. So there's also that happening. Right. And of course, Trump was a great um, catalyst. I mean, we had, we had the Me Too movement already. It was, it sort of simultaneously came in. I mean, it had been That's there true. for a while. So it was, it just, you know, these things are around for a long time and they finally reach you know, what is that critical mass? And then all of a sudden they're everywhere, right? The hundredth monkey or whatever that is. So uh, we had that at the same time that Trump was grabbing women by the private parts or saying that he could do that, right? So, and then we had the Weinstein thing and then he went down and now we have, when E. Jean Carroll, when, it, when they said you're guilty for what you did to E. Jean Carroll, that was a huge, that was huge. That was huge. That was so huge. Maybe even more huge than what he's doing in the country with the with um, um, Jack Smith. Like that. That stuff's important. January sixth is important. He needs to be held accountable for that for sure. But I think even more important was that a woman stood up and said, "The most powerful man in the world did this to me," and a jury said, "Yes, he did." That's big because you know you're a woman. I'm a woman, right? How how no. there's not a single woman who either either hasn't had a Me Too moment, or has organized her life so that she wouldn't have a Me Too. Moment. That she wouldn't have one, right? Exactly. And so, isn't it interesting that that New York said, "Oh, we're going to just in reinstitute this law." So that we can go way, like talk about the way back machine. We can go way back. Mm -hmm. And for one year, a uh, statue of limitations does not exist. And you can bring forth your charges. So what I don't understand, well, I think I understand, but I want to ask you about it. It seems to me, and I, the way I describe it is there's like a scale. And we've gotten so out of balance that, you know, look, this is a free will dualistic planet. 
clearly it's okay to be out of balance. It's never going to be in balance. That's Nirvana. That's a different planet. But I feel like once we get so far out of a balance, it affects other existences. Our vibration is one of distress. And I think that vibration becomes disruptive to other existences. So my question is, why? Why are we getting these breaks? Why does, I mean, does that help with the wounded healer? That that's the, Does that help with the astrology that we would just get this break that all of a sudden New York would say, hey, yeah, if you... The statute of limitations is now, you know, open for the next year. What a lucky break. We've had some lucky breaks here. Well, I think that um, I've wondered that myself about how, how that came about. Like when, when, you know, just like, oh, it popped up. Well, that's, that's right. That's interesting. Maybe it was me too. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't scoured that, that corner yet. Um, but what I would say is we're as we move into this Aquarian age, we have to move into a more egalitarian e- equal society. And we can't have equality if there is an equality between the sexes. Yes. Now there's another astrological thing that that sort of was coming up at this time as well that predates Trump coming in. And that was between 2012 and 2015, we had seven exact squares between Pluto and Uranus. Now, the, what, what's interesting about that, the, the type of energy that a square produces is a crisis. So we had a crisis. And Pluto and Uranus are two of the three planets, there are more, but basically, three planets that deal with the evolution of us as a species. And back in the 60s, Pluto and uh, Uranus conjoined. They came together. And that only happens... I can't remember the the time frame, but it doesn't happen often. And it happened in 65 and 66. So if you were uh, an alien who came to the planet in 1961 when I was born, you would see women walking around with with pearls and pill hats and Chanel. And they'd all look like Jackie, right? The bouffant and the and the right. And then you go to like 1969 and you go and you go to to. Uh, uh, upstate New York, right? And you look around and everybody's got tie dye. The people who are wearing clothes have tie dye things. Everybody's jumping around in the mud. You're like, I, wait a minute, did I make a wrong turn? Is this the Just same? Just imagine, right? Like, how do we do that in how 10 do we do years, that? right? Well, that was Pluto and Uranus. And of course, at that time, we had the women's movement, we had the ecology movement. We had a turn on, drop out and turn on, you know, all those things that were seeded, but it was seeded. So it was like, it was like a giant explosion of different and things that required us to evolve. Well, all that happens in the, in the sign of Virgo. So Virgo deals with unequal relationships, right? And so, you know, a slave has a different, you know, slave and master, right? Woman and man, nothing was, everything was like somebody always had something on somebody, right? So that happened. And then the 70s happened, which were a little bit more expansive. And then everything quieted down, right? Everything quieted down and you didn't really hear about stuff. And then in 2012, those two planets made their first major aspect to each other. And it did seven times. And we have seven chakras. So each one of those squares was a hit to our chakras. Like, a, like of you know, like, wow. not just me and you. You know what I mean? Everybody. Yeah. So it's a crisis in action. And when you get those squares, you have to build foundations for the things that were seeded in the middle of the 60s. So that would be the women's movement. That would be the ecology movement. That would be um the anti-war movement that would be a civil rights movement so all of those things between 2012 and 2017 we had these squares that are saying we have a crisis we have to do this we have to do this so we're past that and so that was during the obama administration right so i'm grateful that we had him during that administ- during that period of time and then i guess the universe thought we were ready for the for the the poo the grand poo bar of chaos, 
And, uh, you know, he, we, we on a certain level, not you and I, of course, because we would never create anything like this, but he was created as an avatar yeah. in a way of, to bring chaos and change. And, and the one thing I've, I've always said about him is he got a lot of people off the couch. I mean, there were a million women in, in got me in off Washington. the couch. Yeah. With, and everybody was, was wearing pink hats. Right now, this now last year, we had the Barbie movie, right? Yeah. So, I mean, pink. And then the other day, I have to just mention, I, I didn't watch all of it because it just in, infuriates me. Uh, they were talking to uh, Bonnie Willis. And she came up and she sat down. She sat there like this. She was wearing Barbie pink. I was like, you go, Fonny. She's, uh... so anyway. So, to answer the question, which I'm not sure I ever got to, why is it different now? Because it's time. It's the time for it. They, we get these breaks because it's time for it. It's time for women to rise up, not to take over. We don't believe in power over. We believe in cooperation, working together, making sure that children are fed and cared for and educated and everybody. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, that's that's the world we want to live in. And the old world order, which is power over, right? Patriarchal, I'm more powerful than you. I'm, I mean, what do billionaires need money for? What does anybody need billions of dollars for? They can't do anything with it. Yeah, it's true. Right? And, and then there are people hand to mouth. I mean, look at all these poor souls just like living in the middle in tents. Yeah. You know, it's like, what? Like, we're... So, so it's a reset to remind us um, of, you know, what we're here for. We're not here to create war. We, I mean, it's been like that pretty much since time immemorial, at least the yes. history we know. Yes. Because it's, we don't know all the history because the history is written by the victors. So, so we don't really, you know, it's, it's a, it's an interesting question. I, did I answer your question? I Yes. I, no, you did. You did. I think it's fascinating because 2012, wasn't that the Mayan calendar one? Wasn't yeah. that the whole thing that we were going to have this mysticism, you know, and I think a lot of us kind of sat around and waited, you know what I mean? And nothing happened, but in reality, looking back on it, I think that's when a lot of us did have sort of these kind of power up it, it didn't manifest maybe until five or ten years later but it 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 certainly i can look back at 2012 and start and, and in, in hindsight i can see some some things that were percolating for me i think it's interesting you said that those were uh the squares were they that, that were the, with the chakras i to me it almost seems like a like an awakening or like an yes. up level, like they, yes. they basically goosed each one of our chakras and said, you know, we're going to get you zooming. We're going to get you zooming. We're yes. going to get you zooming. And I think maybe we've, you've answered our question in the sense that because of all of that, all of those energy changes broadly throughout the United States, whoever it was, the governor of New York, whoever it was that made that decision to say, we're going to open it up for one year. That was a that was a product. That was a product of all of that astrology, of all of those awakenings. Right. Our actions are a product of the awakenings. And just like you said, um, I really do feel like this egalitarianism, the guides talk. I've been talking a lot on my channel about people being in the streets. I've been talking about it for six months, and I've been talking about March and April, before I even knew what March and April were, which is the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse of the lunar eclipse and the solar eclipse. And um, so what astrologically, how can you, in your just off the cuff knowledge, how do you see us traversing this landscape where the haves have so much more since the pandemic, since the pandemic, the haves have so much more than the have nots than I think record on the record. Um, how, how do you think Americans might trans, you know, kind of get through this? What, what might we see? Well, I'd like to know what I'd like to see. Um, 
Well, let me let me say this. This is what I want to say. We're co-creative. So if we want to see something, we have to visualize it. Why we? I I don't want to put my fate in politicians' hands. It's not. It's not like I can't. I can't. You know, I like Joe Biden, but he's not my savior. You know right. what I mean? Like so. Right. Um, I think that we have to not worry about n making it through and make it through and just focus on the life and the world that you want to see because we create that with our consciousness. We got all our chakras blown open. What do you think that makes us weaker? <laughs> no. That's why things are happening so That's fast. Why People like happen. get an idea, boom, it's right there. It's like instant man, everything's instant manifestation. And that's part, and that's why we're in, in so much chaos. Because the other thing is that Pluto going through Capricorn, Pluto like takes things down to the to the to the to the bare bones, and Capricorn is the structure of our it's it it it's the structure of our 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 government. It's the structure of how we 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 organize society and that was it's like a giant stress test so whatever's still around when pluto's done is going to be around whatever's not around when pluto's done it's not going to be around and pluto actually doesn't completely go into aquarius until joe biden's birthday because it goes back into capricorn where it spends the last the last just the last degree of capricorn just, just like the period at the end of the sentence that started with the bank collapse, okay? Period at the end of the sentence from September 1st to the 20th of November. And then it goes into Aquarius where it stays for like 20 years. So we have still have a little bit of something with that Aquarius. And it's, I mean, with that Capricorn. And it's interesting. I wish I had my, um, th there's a book called The Sabian Symbols. And um, you do Sabian symbols, too. I, I mean, yeah, wow. yeah, I can add those in, too. Yeah, sure. Why not add more to the pot? Yeah, exactly. You know, like when you make it's a heck of a gumbo or, or a bula base or something. Yeah, yeah. So this is the last degree of Capricorn that's going to happen when we vote for our president, whoever that might be. OK, um, it says a secret business conference. Um, the highest level of social influence Society is structured hierarchically, and there is a small group of people who secretly direct the course of history, accepting the need for high-level management of collective affairs. That's, That's the, the Sabian degree. the Sabian symbol? For the last degree of Capricorn, yep. For the last degree. And that's going to be, okay, the last degree of Capricorn is going to be until November... On February 20th. November 20th, right through the election. Okay, Um I still see Biden winning and I, and, and perhaps that means that this group of people steer our democracy through the shoppy waters. You know what I yes. mean? Uh, yeah. To the safe shore. Um, because there, we could be dealing with all kinds of things. We could be dealing with, you know, I, I don't think we're going to have another Jan six in the sense of that way, but we could be dealing with some shenanigans. I'm sure we will be. Um, so in very yeah you right. can and and those shenanigans might happen sooner than later sooner than we think uh, yeah and I think I, I I think that uh, what's her name didn't step down because they're planning on putting her in for the uh, when when Trump goes to well when Trump disappears Haley what you think Haley's going to step step down and so yeah we can I think talk she's about gonna, that I think she's going to step in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do, too. So you you also see uh, Trump disappearing or whatever he does. You see that as well. I think it's fascinating because if I was the only one spouting crazy stuff, I, I would be like, I, I'm 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 clearly not connected. You know, so I think it's great that, that, you know, like, why do we all see him not making it? I don't know why. So you see him maybe shuffling off and i want to say off the mortal coil have you ever heard of that which is yeah. basically being unalived 
or he could be locked up in Gitmo, whatever it is. He's off of this world stage. He's off of the world stage is what they're also said. So do you see that? Like, uh, do you have any sort of timing or idea for that? Do you? I mean, this eclipse is pretty uh, powerful. Is pretty powerful. Uh, but eclipse, you know, it, it, eclipses are powerful, but it doesn't have to happen on the day of the eclipse. Anytime something comes along to activate the degrees of the eclipse, something can happen. It, it it resonates for a while. And eclipses are opportunities for us to do like a evolutionary leap. You know, it's like um, there's an astrologer, Rick Levine, most people probably who are astrologers know Rick Levine. He says that when you, when you have an eclipse, it's like, normally it's like night and day. You turn the light on, you turn the light off, night and day, right? He said an eclipse, it's like this. You, oh. on and off on and off on and off on and off and so it's it has the energy of uranus uh, the eclipse i think that uh trump has been gone i i think his his what do you call was was written you know you're out of here uh because there was an eclipse right around september um december 14th of 2020 that was when i think that's when they had that meeting and some mm -hmm. and, Right. So uh, but oh, I right. think I think that uh, the other thing that the other thing was that the the Republican Party, when Trump went in, was having a Uranus return. So Uranus is like, well, it's it's a chaos. And they were actually have they were in the middle of their return when when Trump came in. And so really, they're a different party now. They are. They're a different party. And, and you know, what's going to happen? I think once Trump goes, you're going to have, there's going to be more, there's going to be the people who are more like the Cheney, the, yes. the, the typical, and then you're still going to have the MAGAs. You're still going to have right. some of them. And I think we have to be concerned about DeSantis because yeah. like we're relieved he's not around, but I don't, I think he's, I don't think he's gone not gone yet no. he's not gone yet and i and i wish i could say i thought he was but no, uh, no but no. you know nikki haley has a pretty powerful chart she's got her son at 30 degrees of capricorn so pluto's going to be on her son now that doesn't mean she's going to win but she's going to be a, a power player and a if player. you're running for president you're a power player whether you win or not right. so we'll see but hopefully i i do think that the Democrats, it's going to be a, a Democratic, another blue wave, which has been happening, mind you, since 2018. We've had a blue wave since 2018 or whatever it was. I think that was the the the, the election, right? Two years in when he lost the House. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, and then, you know, then he all he did was was obfuscate and uh, and uh delay and he was just you know, shutting the government down he's like a, a petulant child he took his his binky away <laughs> jesus that's his diet the things we have to learn the yeah. things we have to learn so it's interesting so um that is all rather fascinating i kind of feel like right now i think trump is going to be out in august i don't know why I, I could see something happening before then, but I think if nothing else, I think August. I kind of saw chaos. I, I saw uh, Nikki Haley, of course, uh, you know, trying to get that mantle. I saw DeSantis coming back. I saw Vivek coming. I mean, look, they're all going to come back. They're all going to be elbowing each other, trying to get that mantle. Um, I don't see it. I, it's just too chaotic. And the fact that, that the MAGA is only going to vote for Trump. So if he's not there for whatever reason, they're not going to vote. And there's not enough people that want to upset the apple cart enough to put Nikki Haley in. But I will, I totally agree with you that if things were slightly different, Nikki Haley could really probably give Biden a run for his money, which is sad because um, she's quite, right wing herself actually oh, yeah. she's, she's not, not that she's different not a, nope just like cheney is not that different from trump it, she really isn't she voted over 90 percent with him but yet she has, has developed this sort of image of calm and moderation 
And that's what Nikki Haley's doing. So that's fascinating. Do you, I'm going to throw a curveball at you. And if you don't know, that's fine. Or maybe you, you want to just check in with your intuition. But you astrologers are often going to 2026 and then stopping. <laughs> like you often tell me until 2026. And so I want to know what you guys know, because I feel the same way. Like, so in 2026, we're having another one of these conjunctions that doesn't happen very often. And uh, it's not like Pluto and Uranus, so that's good. Uh, but it's it's Neptune and Saturn. And Saturn is a, the planet of structure. And Neptune is the planet of dissolution. And they're going to come together at the first degree of the zodiac, which is Aries. It's called a world point. Whenever anything happens at Aries, uh, things happen in the world. So there's an, a sense of creating your own reality with that. Now, we have to also consider that, uh, and I, I don't consider it too much because I, I already have enough trouble with technology, um, is that AI is coming in, right? Yeah. AI is here, and that's going to be reality AI was first mentioned when Pluto went to Aquarius last year, right? And now we have AI again. They're talking about AI. It's gotten so much better, this, that, and the other thing. So creating your own reality de depends on who is, uh, who's in charge of the system where you can create the reality, you know what I'm saying? So there's that. But in an optimistic, which is the only way I choose to live, really, um, is that we create our own reality. Like, we, instead of thinking that things like AI is going to be take over, take over, what, what is it going to take over? It's it's just using information that we already have. Does, does it have a consciousness to destroy? No, we have the consciousness to destroy. Maybe it's going to get better. You know, I don't know. This is just things I'm throwing out into the air. But it is a point where we get to decide what we want a reality to look like. And so now, as we go through this chaos, which just increases and increases and increases, we are in an eight vibration this year. So... Things that were planted in 2017, we were in a 10-1 vibration. We were in a change year. We were in the wheel of fortune. And our fortunes changed. Boy, didn't they change, right? And now we're in the eight period of that. 2026 is another 10-1 year. And so it's another, another wheel of fortune. Another wheel of fortune. And you, you are you are what you do you are what you focus on and so we only have a certain amount of power we can vote and then what else can you do maybe you can call on phone maybe for that type of person you want to go and say this is what this person stands for this is what everybody does their thing right that's great but we create our reality with our consciousness and now we're even more powerful than what we were before Problem is, is that you can only really create it if you're in your heart, because the lower chakras don't have the power. They get the power from the upper chakras. So if you're not in your heart and humanity in, in, um, in, uh, es not esoteric, yeah, esoteric tradition, the, the, the works of Alice Bailey and, and, uh, and that astrology, she, it, it's, Humanity is a fourth ray, and fourth ray is is harmony through conflict, and the fourth ray is in the heart chakra, and so we have to find harmony through because we're 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 in a dual existence. We have to know like both ends of the spectrum, but we have to live in the center of the spectrum, right? So, so we need to and and how do you do that? You focus. Like the I am is your power, right? This is your power comes like this. So where's your power? Your power is not worrying about the future. Your power is not moaning about the past. Your power is in the moment. So what are you doing in the moment? That's what you have to ask yourself. And this is great practice because the world is, is just going. And can you focus on your vision? And so, again, I don't know if I answered your question, but you did. So that's that's kind of the energy that I see coming. 
So as manifestors, right? So we are in, in this world point in 26. And if people don't like what Congress has done those two years, or if they do like it, whatever that is, they're going, in my opinion, and, and I think it is going to come from their heart. They're going to be more expressive. They're, I just feel like people are more likely to get in the streets in the next oh, yeah. five years, six yes. years, eight years. I think it's you're going to have protest and um, things like that weekly. I mean, it's going to be a commonplace kind of energy throughout the United States and perhaps even in cities that don't typically experience this kind of thing. And I'm not saying that the riots, but I'm saying that people will say, you're going to hear us. You're going to hear. It's almost like they're, they can't help it. They're, they're, they're propelled and compelled to get in the streets to make their voices heard. And I think some of this is left over. It's like, it's, it's even, it's even left over from the Trump years. Like even though Biden is listening to them, Congress is not. The gerrymandered districts, they still feel, my God, none of us believe in the laws that are being passed. We don't believe embryos are, are humans. We don't believe that corporations are citizens. We don't believe that we should uh, not have, we believe in a choice. We, we, all of these things are being taken from us. Yet, there's more of us that believe differently. So I really feel like this is what's going to happen is we're going to pour into the streets. I think that, you know, in the in the political realm, the Democrats are ready to do that. Yes. The Democrats are ready. The Republicans don't don't have they have nothing. They have nothing. So can they, you know, in the two years after the election, can, can they? they get it together? And if they want to stay on the Trump train or the manga train, that's not you know, they they have a point. I'm not saying that they're right, but there are things they say and the people who were involved in that have a point. And I think we need to listen to everybody's point because it is, but there, I think there is, there's more of a need to like be, well, you talk about the generations, these gen, the generations, and, and I go by astrology signs. So the Pluto and Sages, that's the Parkland kids, <laughs> right? The Pluto and Capricorn, those are the bosses. They're the kids that come in like a big boss, right? Um, what age they, are those? The Pluto and Capricorn? So, Pluto and Capricorn, 2008 to, to, to November. So right? now, Pluto okay. And Capricorn, okay. Right? They, they're now, we, now we have that Pluto time. Aquarius okay. kids coming in, right? Okay. So, so, but those kids, they lived their life and collectively, they all went to like their their parents worked. They went to uh, not school. What do you call that? Daycare. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah. Right. So they're more, and they're so connected. They like yes. talk to each other. It doesn't matter where they're. I don't know, I'm talking to my friend in New Zealand. You know, like you could just. So like they, they're the they're the power. There's the power right there. That's the power of technology. You know, we got all connected. How do you and I meet? We met yeah. because we're we we had a place to meet and we vibrated similarly. So right. well, however you vibrate is what you're going to attract, and so that's what you want to keep in mind as well. We all have to be consciously aware and responsible for our for our mind, for our minds. We we don't we can't we can't afford to give the power of our minds over to a fox no, news that's what or, happened or an msnbc it's not that's... That different well of course pluto and aquarius pluto and aquarius is the raising of all boats you know the higher raising of all is, boats of okay all boats right the, the hierarchy is like this now as that crumbles what happens is it just sort of does this and so things even out but it it's doesn't it doesn't it's not it it doesn't feel secure because there's all these voices that are happening, right? So it's almost like we're a living organism. It's like a, it's like cells in a body. If we can learn to communicate between cells, we can actually create something wonderful. I mean, we have, we it, honestly, it's already there. It's already created. We just have to catch up. It's already, you know, it's already there. It's already there. When we rise up, we kind of get out of the, 
one of the reasons why people don't want to see war. They're like, what's this about? Because we 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 lived through Vietnam. We know the deal. We know that most wars are, are started on lies. Vietnam was started on a lie. I think the Korea this is before my time. The Korean wasn't even considered a war. No, that was right. uh, the The, the lie about the, the cake uranium for Iraq, it's all lies. Right. It's all lies. It's all right. lies. And people people know that now. Yes, that's like, right. Like, what are we doing? So, you know, but when you see like the Ukrainians getting bombed, or you see the Gazans yeah. getting killed, you don't want to see that. You want to say, stop it. Like, somebody stop it. Somebody do. Somebody be an adult. And yet, and yet it's not getting stopped, is it? So, no. The other thing about Pluto and Capricorn, Pluto and Capricorn is the. Um, military industrial complex, which took over the United States after World War II. So we'll be moving out of that. I hope so. Into Pluto and Aquarius. Now, and, and this isn't going to be instant, you guys. It's not like December 1st or whatever it is that we're all going to wake up and be this new energy. But I do think that it's it's a powerful change. I do feel like those of us that feel energy will feel this change. Um, so Pluto and Aquarius is what? What can we expect? Um, we can expect uh, more uprisings, more the, it's people power. I mean, every country is, is going through this and, and right. every country was going through it. And we were too, but we had this distraction, this orange distraction or something. So, uh, But now, you know, we're people are taken to the streets. People are taken to the streets. I think there was just a something about there was a a, a state that went something about the state and and the the um, Supreme Court around guns. There was like something that just recently, like in the last couple of days, came down about their. Oh their yeah, party. the NRA, the NRA. They well, yeah, and you know who that was. That was Letitia James. Let yes. I think Letitia James is like a magician, that girl. She's she awesome. is. And she's progressive. She started. She's progressive. A, I yeah, love her. I, I love her. I think she's from Brooklyn. How could she not like she, a Brooklyn girl? As soon as she can get gifts, as soon as she's out of that position, I'm going to send her a dozen roses. I swear to God. <laughs> um, so, you know, yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And, and I think guns, that's going to be something that you're going to see change. Um, the people don't want this. They really, really don't want this. And once they stop accepting this diet of fear and they realize, wait a minute, you've been saying this is going to be happening and it hasn't happened. Therefore, I don't think it is going to happen. Therefore, I think you're crazy. And I'm going to stop listening to you that I think that we're going to move into this quite, quite quickly and easily. Hopefully. Well, I, I would like to see that. I live in a, in a state where we have I think the least amount of gun violence because we have the strongest laws. I like that. Yeah, that too. That's very nice. Um, <laughs> so also with uh, Pluto and Aquarius is, um, is there anything with food? Why do I feel like I'm seeing food production or food stuffs? What are food stuffs? Isn't that like uh, supplies or something? Well, That could be well. We have Uranus right now is in Taurus, and Taurus rules food. Oh, okay. and so and food. You know, when you have um, climate change, where do you grow the food? How do you right. get the food? Food, I think, needs to be more local. Fa factory farming of of, yeah. of of animals is not. Yeah. It's not good. It's it's against. We have to like. The other thing that's going to happen is we're a country that has too much and there are plenty of people that don't have enough and that's going to even out and we're going to have to get used to that. And I think it's a good thing because honestly, America wasn't about, America was about people coming, finding some peace and, and creating a little something for themselves that's going to better their lives. That's right. Unfortunately for the slaves and unfortunately for the Native American, I think we have to claim the Native Americans again. Chiron and Aries is in the fourth house in the United States Sibley chart. That's the house of land. And that's, and, and, and on every Chiron return that I've studied so far, there's been a big Indian, there was a big Indian uh, piece making peace with with well Native it was a piece uh, there was a piece that had to do with the indian the start 
right before the Trail of Tears happens around a Chiron return. So we have to look at how we've treated the, the indigenous. That's part of our wound. That's part of our wound, exactly. And we have to heal that stuff. We have to, and the thing is, is if we were to just open to the wisdom of the native, yeah. we could solve all our problems. We really could. I'm not kidding you. We could solve all our problems. But we have this idea that we're smarter. We have dominion over yeah. everything and we can do whatever yeah. battle we want. Well, you yeah. can't poop where you eat. It's going to kill you. Just, you yeah. can't do it. We have to go by natural law, not man's law. Man's law is... Thought slavery was okay. Man's yeah. law thinks women should have their rape babies. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like that's not any law I want to follow. No, that's not. That's not. That's not a. No, that's not divine law. That's not. That's right. not divine law. I think divine law is like you're saying it's more equal. So that's very fascinating. So we'll see more. So I I have never. I don't even know when I've ever said the word reparations, and now I think I've said it two or three times in this video. Um, I don't know what that looks like. I don't. I wouldn't even begin to say, because it's not for me and I wouldn't have a voice in that, right? <laughs> but I think the people that it's for should have a voice in it. And I keep getting that, and I can never remember the name of it, but it's when you basically get a basic income check, a basic income check. I'm telling you guys by 28, 2028, people are gonna be getting a basic income check from the United States. I know that sounds crazy. I don't think that's socialism at all. There are already practicing with it in various cities. They're practicing with it in Houston right now. Um, you know, and, and they're discovering that when they give people a thousand dollars a month, it goes to their rent. It doesn't go to uh, concerts or clothes or wh whatever people think. Um, plus we need to kind of get over this judgment of you're going to spend your money. You know, you get welfare, you can only spend it on this. Um, let people be adults, right? And um, let them do what they're going to do. Uh, so I feel like we're going to be having that too, which I think is also a wound, healing a wound. Yeah, yeah. That's all the patriarchal stuff. Like that's all the judgment and you're bad, you know, you're a woman, you're bad, you're sexual, you're bad. You you're, were born a sinner, you know, and you got to work sin. your way up from there, you know? Original sin, who's sin? Who sin? Sin means missing the mark. I'll tell you who's missing the mark. It ain't me. <laughs> Father awesome. hypocrite. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say? No, it's, I love it. I love what? it. No, it's. I'm very spicy on my channel. I, ask anybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's that is that is good. So basically, what you feel like in 26 is is that if we manifest it, which means that people say from their hearts. I want, you know, yeah, great. We we got Biden, we got Democrats, great. However, because the problem is, is that the, the problem is in the states. The problem is in, you know, the state house of the states. Um, that is not going to be solved, unfortunately, with a Democratic president and a de Democratic Congress. So the states are still going to have their own issues that are going to be worked out and being worked out. And so that's why I think also the people will be active. People will be saying, no, I, I love my state. I'm not willing to move, right? I'm not willing to move to a blue state. I'm going to stay here and fight for this state, right? And I think the more the Democrats get to actually invest in America, because look what look what investing in America has done already, right? Yeah. Now, not everybody's on. There's still people... Uh, housing is ridiculous. the The whole real estate thing has to change and shift, right? Chiron in the in the fourth house of home and real estate. Um, so so that that but once the things start flowing into those areas, I think they'll become more yeah. amenable to actually, you know, saying, "Oh, wait, wait a minute," you know. And I we have to do something about the foxes. And the, with the the news, the news, the media. Media. The, media, the media, we absolutely have to. Well, what the can we do? Media. I think we have to become the media. Like the media is the message. We're messaging to people. We are the media. We're the well, news. I mean, yeah. Anybody yeah. who's got a computer can be media, right? So they right. And they they laid off all those journalists in the L.A. Times. I mean, they're laying off journalists, and I think these journalists, and, and it's just like the guides are saying, it's about the writers in Hollywood that had the strike. 
you know, um, I've got clients that were in that strike and the, the guides, the, their spirit guides said, get yourself on YouTube, grab the actors, create your own show on YouTube. We are going to take it from the corporations. It's basically what you're saying about Aquarius. We're right. going to take it from these power centers and we're going to decentralize the power, which is what you're saying. We're going to be the news. Um, you know, they said that some huge amount of Gen Zers or whatever they are, um, get their news from TikTok. You know, and and you just have to you're going to have to verify it and vet it and figure it out for yourself. But I really think that these people are playing with fire. They don't understand what's about to happen because I think Hollywood is going to get decentralized. Among a lot of other. Well, I don't think I think that's probably a good thing because I think that I think it's a good thing. I think there it's like the um, it's like Jesus going through the temple with the whip. Right. That's Hollywood. They're they're kind of like the the, you know, the Pharisees or the Sadducees or whatever. I was cat. I grew up Catholic, so we didn't read the Bible all that much. But I know that, it was, you know, the, like the old the old system, the old system. Jesus was Jesus was a whole new thing. Actually, Jesus was pretty Aquarian in his nature. You know, love. Love is the answer. Right. Yeah. Okay. And we can heal ourselves. You can do what I do is what he said. That's right. right? He's, well, he's well, Jesus, Jesus on the tree of life is in Tipperath. It's in the heart chakra. It's the sacrifice to God. The, the idea that you can only reach the father through me. You, the only way you can get to the highest is through the heart. That's what that means. Separation. God, the guides have been talking to me nonstop about separation. Do not separate yourself from the divine, you know, if separation is this, this preacher that is driving five, you know, jets, <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Is separating you from your money so that you can be closer. Do not put me, do not put anybody on some kind of pedestal. Do yeah. not do it. Do not do it. Because you don't need to, you have all the power you need, but you have to start here. If you're below that, if you're in your solar plexus and below, you're never going to really understand the power of, of co-creation. Or if you're in these, like I just did a class with a Fefe who has a touch by Tarot and she was, she like lit me up because she said your heart is in the middle, right? That you have your lower chakras and your higher chakras. A lot of us are in our higher chakras. That's you right. know, That's why you can't, that's why it's hard for spiritual people to manifest. Yes, like they're not connected, but you have it has to be what you love. Do what you love and love what you do right here. So if I drop into my heart chakra, I'm going to manifest the lottery. No, <laughs> but I'm going to manifest. Uh, whatever I'm it okay is with that. that. Yeah, right. Exactly. Whatever, whatever you want. So that's interesting that you say that. That's why spiritual people don't manifest because they're all up here, right? Um, conversely, if you're all up here, not only are you not in your heart chakra, but you're not in your sacral or your root chakra or your solar plexus. I mean, you're not, you're not taking care of yourself. You're, you're very top heavy. You're kind of like, you know, not grounded. You're not. Well, you can be in your shot, your heart chakra too, but, but you have to, you know, like if we're going to be purposeful on plan, we're here anyway, <laughs> why don't we just utilize what we have? And do what we all need to do. Use all of it. We're, we we came in for a job and we weren't given like half a body to work with. We were given a whole body. And and so it's, it's you know, I mean, 35 years as a chiropractor, aligning the spine with the divine. You know, oh. we talk about subluxation being a lack of light, sublux, less light. And when you get adjusted, you turn the light on. Right. So that's a physical thing. So uh -huh. I kind of started talk about starting from the ground up. The first place you look is their feet. What are their feet doing? And then you go up their spine. Right. So. Uh, so, yeah. So we all we all need a chiropractic adjustment. We all need uh, to understand what's in our heart. What brings us the most joy? What's going to make you feel like a child again? And for those of, of of us who maybe didn't have a childhood for whatever reason, now we get to have it. Right. Let's do it. Let's let's be in love. Let's be in love with ourselves. Because if you don't love yourself, you everything, everybody in your life is a reflection anyway. If 
you love yourself and you're whole in your heart, everybody you see is going to reflect that back to you. And that's a much better relationship than I'm not worthy. And then you attract somebody who beats you up. Who needs that? Right? For a job. I mean, you guys, this, the mirror works in all ways. It can even be a pet that is showing you that you're not valuing yourself, right? Uh, it could be a job. It can be a child. It can be a spouse. Right. Um, it can even be your own health uh, that you're not honoring. So that's beautiful that you said that. I love that. It's so important. And, and it's such, I really feel like if anything else, this next couple of years, that is our lesson is to be in our heart because we get a lot of heart work to do. We're going to have to look at these magas and we're going to have to say, when they come to us and they say, I really screwed up. I don't know what I was thinking. Now I've lost my family. I've lost my job. I lost my certification. I, you know, whatever it was, I lost my standing. And now I realize that I was taken. And, and what the spirit guides have asked us to do is not to berate them, not to yeah. say, you big dummy, what were you thinking because of you? You know, yeah, we're angry. Yeah, I get it. But if they present to you in full and complete, you know, mea culpa, like, hey, you know, I'm owning this, then, then that's when the Jesus moment, that's when we go to them and we say, yeah, I'm sorry that that happened to you. I, I have compassion for you. I can see how you're hurting and I have compassion for you. And hey, let's have a talk. Let's let's sit down to dinner. You know, that's that's really the test, you guys. That's what's coming. Now, of course, some of these people are not going to do that. Some of these people are still going to be, you know, and that's fine. Stay away from them because right. they're not they're not in the right mind. They're literally corrupted. They have um, like a mind virus. They have a mind virus. And yeah. so- and I do see, I do see deprogramming centers. I've always seen deprogramming centers. Um, they have to do it for themselves. You know, they, they no one's going to go around knocking people on the head and dragging them into a deprogramming center. However, if you if you feel like you've lost everything and you're addicted to this energy, it's an addiction. That's right. You've got to have help to get through that. And I really think. Just like Biden, like like the government gave us free test, you know, for the uh, the oh, disease, the virus. Um, you know, I think there's going to be a period of time where the government's going to sponsor this, and then we're going to be on our own. It's kind of like here's your training wheels, get it together, and then off you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's healing ahead. There's healing ahead. But you know, the more we shine our light, the the more healing happens. It happens within you, you know, just like any kind of addiction, you have to know that there's a problem first and then you, then you take steps and there are people there who aid you and help you. There's always people bring, you know, with the healers, the, you don't have to have a degree in chiropractic or you don't have to be an MD or you don't have to be a dentist. You, you everybody's a healer. Everybody has the capacity. Like I wouldn't let everybody adjust me, but but you know, oh, some like you don't have to be a psychic. You you know, no. a light worker is, in my opinion, somebody who's got light in their heart and and is is vibrating at that level at, at least sometimes. And again, we don't vibrate at this amazing level all the time. Believe me, you know, it's the guides often talk about the piano. Humans are meant to to play all the the notes. We're not supposed to just play the low or the medium or the high. We're supposed to have this beautiful, you know, music that that sometimes we're going to have low notes and sometimes we're going to be, yeah, and sometimes we're going to be like really, you know, pumped up. Um, that's okay. Yes. We have to sing our song and sing our song. Sing our song. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Vicky, for coming on, for talking about this stuff. I am... Um, I'm so I'm just so excited to find another unique person like you. I'm telling you guys, the Kabbalah, the numerology, the tarot, the psychic, the astrology, 
Wow, what a package of healing that was for me. So if you guys are interested, check out in the description. I'll put all her information there and you can get your own amazing reading with her. Any last words of wisdom you want to leave with us as we as we uh, go into this um, summer with the eclipses and the all the things that are happening? I would say that focus on what you have influence over and let the rest go focus on what you have influence over and let the rest go yeah. which is you. you i mean that's the, your true power is is you is is your i am is your and the north node is in aries now so we're all having to figure out who we are and stand in it what do we stand for who are we and in our heart chakra and our love, our self-love, really, you guys, if we all just did that, everything would self-correct. It would. It would. Because all of this chaos is, is what's in us. It doesn't happen to us. It happens for us and because of us. So if, 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 we, if it's gotten this out of hand, we can get it back into hand. We just have to focus on the right things, I think. At least that's my plan. So I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> let me know. Let me know how it goes. We'll be like, it's working. It's working. <laughs> yes, I no, I agree. It, it it all makes sense to me. It makes sense astrologically. It makes sense for my spirit guides. And I think it's powerful. It's the I I love that the I am is Aries. It really is. And and we're all going to be figuring out who we are, what we stand for. That's and, right. and, 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 um, and, and if then, you're not, and okay. if you're not sure, this is where a reading will, ha would help you to focus your energy. Cause there's so many things pulling us in so many ways. And it's not just the media. We all have families. We all have, you know, we all live someplace. There's always something. So it's, it's always good to know who you are. Yeah, and uh, most of us do. have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> These are tools. I mean, you know, get your tools, uh, use your tools, ask yourself the question, how do I feel today? Uh, do I feel up? Do I feel down? Come back into your own body, you guys. We're out of our bodies in the screens. We're not yeah. even living in our bodies. And that's what you said earlier about we're not, if you're in the lower chakras, which is fear a lot of times and safety, I'm, I don't feel fear. I don't feel safe and I, you know, I don't have my foundation about me. Come up into that heart chakra, come up into the love, start loving on yourself. That will self-correct the fear. Check in with yourself, check in with your own surroundings. You are okay. I am okay. It's the I am statements. I love that. Vicki, you have been such a pleasure to have on my channel. Thank you so very much. And you have Thank a channel. You. Uh, yes, my name, Victoria Skirbo, just like it is down there where you can see. Yep. But your uh, website is different. Your website is. Yes, seeds my website is the seeds of transformation.com. Uh, she'll write it down because if, I will write it if, down. if it's the CC, it all kinds of stuff comes up when I say that it doesn't, it doesn't, you know what I mean? When the closed captions, yes. I'm like, I didn't say that. I know it murders the the closed captions. It is, must be is, my uh, accent. It's dicey. Is your accent <laughs> nice? But yes, yeah, so I'll put all her all her contact information down below. You guys all take really good care wherever you are. Whenever you're watching this video, take really good care of yourself and uh, visit Vicky on her channel. And we'll see you again really soon. All right, take good care. Bye, everyone. for entertainment purposes only.